All right, so here's another trig equation we're going to solve. Uh, again, your goal first is to get a single trig function if possible. So um, we have sine x and cosecant x. We need to either just have cosecant or just have sine. Sine we're more used to working with, so I would go with sine. Um, so we use identities here, and we know that cosecant is 1 over sine x. So we are going to replace the cosecant with a 1 over sine x. Okay, and next we need to combine these as a single fraction. So this over 1, we need a common denominator. Our common denominator would be sine x, so I multiply by sine x here, and whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the same to the top. So now I have sine squared x plus 1 all over sine x. I got a common denominator and then went ahead and added my numerators. Sine times sine was sine squared plus 1. And my common denominator is sine x. Well, I can't really solve this if it's equal to 1. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can either bring the 1 over, get a common denominator and add again, or I can just multiply by the sine of x to remove it from this denominator and do the same on this side. Okay, so now I have sine squared x plus 1 equals the sine of x. <clears throat> we need to now, since we have a sine squared and a sine, it needs to be equal to 0 in order to solve and we're going to, we have a quadratic here, so we need to either factor or use the quadratic formula to solve. So I'm going to isolate, <clears throat> get it equal to 0, and I have a sine squared x minus sine x plus 1. Now, if we want to, we need to try and factor this. And our term here is our sine x, a sine squared, a sine, and a constant on the end. One thing that can be helpful is to replace the sine with something else for just a minute so you can think through it as far as factoring so you don't have quite so many things to keep track of. So let's make sine x be u, for example. So this would be u squared minus u plus 1. Okay, And we want to try to factor that. Well, the factor, we'd have to find factors of 1 that add to be negative 1. Well, the only way to get 1 is to either do 1 times 1, which when we add them is 2, or do negative 1 times negative 1, which when we add those is negative 2. So this is not factorable. Okay, instead, we are going to have to use the quadratic formula, which remember is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. a is the coefficient here, b would be my negative 1, and c my number on the end. So if I substitute those values in, and b is negative 1, so I have negative negative 1 plus or minus, which makes that plus, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, our leading coefficient was 1, times c, the number on the end, is also 1, all over 2 times 1. Well, that gives me positive 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and negative 4 times 1 times 1 is negative 4. So I get 1 minus 4 is negative 3 over 2. So I'm getting that u, my sine squared, or excuse me, my sine, is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3. Now, square root negative 3 is an imaginary or a complex number, and we don't use those at that point. We can't have that the sine of x is equal to 1 plus the negative square root 3 over 2. We can't have that the sine of x is equal to 1 minus the negative square root 3 over 2. So since we have a negative square root, these are both invalid solutions. So this actually has no solution. Not that it has no solution at all, but it does have no real number solutions. So we put no solution. All right, let's try another. So again, here we have 2 sine squared x minus cosine squared x equals 1. Okay, well, um, we have sines and cosines. We can't have that. So we need either to change this all to sines or all to cosines. 
Um, it's up to you, whichever you would like to do. I'm going to change to all cosines. Okay. To do that, I'm using my identity that the sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. So I replace sine squared with that value. 2 times 1 minus cosine squared x minus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Distribute the 2 to remove those parentheses, and I have 2 minus 2 cosine squared x minus cosine squared x is equal to 1. We're going to combine like terms here, so I have 2, negative 2, and negative 1 more is negative 3 cosine squared x equals 1. Now, I've combined all my like terms, and I stop for a minute and I take a look, and I just have cosine squared. I don't have another cosine x, so I don't have to factor this time to solve it. Um, I can just get the squared by itself and take the square root of both sides, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I want to get this cosine squared alone, so I'd have to subtract this 2, and that gives me negative 3 cosine squared x equals negative 1. Next we would divide both sides by negative 3, and I get cosine squared x is equal to 1 third. Now to get rid of that squared, we are going to take the square root of both sides. But again, remember, if you take the square root when you're solving an equation, you have to put plus or minus to account for both the positive and negative. So I get co cosine x is equal to the square root of 1 third, and that cosine x is equal to the <coughs> square root of 1 third. Now you can go ahead and use your calculator to find that. because it's not going to be a simplified answer. Um, so we have cosine x is 0.577, and cosine x is negative 0.577. Now remember, we're, we don't want cosine x. We want to actually know what x is. So our next step would be to do the inverse cosine of both sides, or the arc cosine, to remove that. So we take the arc cosine of both sides. So here, the cosine, inverse cosine cancel like we wanted. Over here, we need to use our calculator and do the inverse cosine of 0.577. Now that's rounded, so we're going to be off just a hair. But um, we get 54.76, which I'm going to just go ahead and round to the nearest degree. So about 55 degrees. Remember, your calculator will only give you one answer, but there are actually two answers to this. Um, cosine is positive 0.577 at 55 degrees. But remember, cosine will have that same positive value in the third quadrant. It's positive in first, excuse me, and fourth quadrant. So this angle that is 55 degrees away from our axis, so we're going to go 360 minus 55 is 305. Okay, so my other answer is that x equals 305 degrees. Okay, and then we want all of the answers if we continue go around the circle. Okay, so we're going to put plus or minus 360k, plus or minus 360k. Now, Let's solve this equation. So again, we do the inverse cosine like we did for the other. And then we take out our calculator and calculate the inverse cosine of negative 0.577, which is about 125. Okay. Okay, but again, that was the negative cosine. So the cosine is negative 5.7 at about 125 degrees. But remember, cosine is also negative in this quadrant, and we'll have a similar angle here. Um, how far is this from the x-axis? So 180 minus 125. Okay, so this was 55 degrees away. So 55 degrees away here, I'm sure if that makes sense, is a 235 degree angle will also have a cosine of negative 0.577. Okay, 235 and 125. 
Now notice after I've done that, I need to add the 360k so that every time I come around the circle I get that again. Um, but notice our answers were 55, 125, 235, and 305. Those are all, which they should be, 55 degrees away from that x-axis. So notice if I start with my 55 degree angle and I add just 180, I get to 235. If I add 180 again, I come back to this angle, add 180 again. So we can simplify our answers here. I can change this answer here to cover both of these since they're 180 degrees away from each other. So my answer would be 55 degrees plus or minus 180k. And again, this doesn't happen every time, but it will can happen if you have um, the positive and negative of the same number. That's your cosine. Okay. Um, and also, my other answer that I had, 125. Notice if I go 180 degrees, where do I end up? I end up at that 305 degree angle. And if I go 180 from there, I end up at 125. 180 from there, I'm at the 305. So I'm going to combine those as an, a single answer also and have 125 degrees plus or minus 180k. And that gives me all four of those answers in a nicer package. All right, here is another, yet another. <laughs> okay, so we have two secant x plus cosine x. Again, our first job is to get a single trig function if we can. Um, so let's take a look at this. Well, secant is the same as one over cosine. So I could read, write this as two over cosine x plus cosine x equals zero. If I get a common denominator and add those to be a single fraction, I would have to multiply by cosine x here and here. That gives me 2 plus cosine squared, because cosine times cosine is cosine squared, over that common denominator of cosine x is equal to 0. Now since this is equal to 0, I can multiply both sides by cosine and have 2 plus cosine squared equals 0. But I would want to first say that the denominator can't be zero. Okay, so we would start by saying, well, the denominator cannot equal zero. So we cannot give an answer where the cosine of x would be zero. Um, if we did the inverse cosine to find out what that is, um, cosine is zero at 90 and at 270. So that's one stipulation we would have to make right here. Okay, but then we continue to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the cosine of x. Okay, and I get 0 over here is equal to 2 plus cosine squared x. I have just a cosine, so I can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get cosine squared x equals negative 2. To remove a squared, I would need to take the square root, and that gives me that cosine x is equal to the square root of negative 2, which again, we only want real number answers, and the square root of negative 2 is an imaginary or a complex number. So this actually has, we put no solution, but what we're meaning is there are no real solutions to this problem.